Welcome to Man Cave Media. Today I have myself a new hard drive enclosure. Let's check it out. All right, so today we're checking out the Yoda Master Dragoon. It is a two bay aluminum hard drive enclosure that supports RAID. And the reason why I have this here is uh, subscribers of my channel, you may have seen a recent video I posted where I refurbished an old Mac Pro, uh, an old cheese grater, uh, 5 comma 1 uh, Mac Pro to be exact. I rescued it from a recycle pile and brought it back to life. And I was using it to edit my videos here and there. Uh, but that machine, it, it uses too much power. It, it blows too much heat <laughs> in my office. Uh, I mentioned this before on my channel and several times on my podcast. My office is detached from the main house, so the central AC doesn't come back here. First world problems, I know. I have a crappy little portable unit that I use back here, and that 5.1 Mac Pro is just a, it's a space heater is the best way to describe it. it. It uses a lot of power. It blows a lot of heat through those fans, and while it still works fine and functions fine for my needs, it just wasn't practical for me anymore. And I found myself uh, using my personal 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro, uh, my 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro to be exact. Uh, I found myself using that more and more to do my video editing. Uh, I bought a stand for it for my desk. Uh, I bought some Thunderbolt cables so I could use my monitors. And it's just a better setup overall. And so I found a new home for the Mac Pro. It is not going to a landfill, I promise. Uh, that is what I set out to do from the beginning, uh, just to rescue it from the landfill. So I did find it a new home, somebody else who can mess around with it and enjoy it the way that I did for these last few months. And so the Mac Pro is no more. That being said, the one function that the Mac Pro did serve that I still have a need for is backup space. I, I installed these two uh, four terabyte uh, Western Digital hard drives that I had in my old file server. I had those installed in the Mac Pro. Uh, I was using that not only for my my time machine backups, but I was also using it for my YouTube video backups, like all all the the B roll and and everything else, like all the raw footage. I I was backing it all up there, and so I still have a need for that. Uh, I do have another file server that, so it's my HTPC that pulls double duty. Uh, but that primarily serves as my Windows file server, and it's got a bunch of like my personal stuff on it, my wife and I's uh, uh, photo collections, and you know movies, home movies of our kids and stuff like that. So uh, I kind of like to keep that stuff separate from my from my hobby, from my YouTube hobby, uh, my podcast hobby as well, for that matter. And so I still have a need. And why not a network attached storage? You ask yourself. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't really need that for for my purposes. I do everything right here, within a three foot radius. <laughs> uh, record, edit, backup, all that stuff happens right where I'm sitting. So I don't need a network attached storage. Uh, I already kind of have that set up with my HTPC for my Windows devices, and I just don't need it. So anyway, long story short, enough waffle talking about it. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, so this guy does support, as I mentioned, um, it does support RAID. It supports RAID 0 and RAID 1. Uh, but for my needs, I'm not going to run it in RAID. I'm going to run it. It does have the option to run them independently uh, as two separate drives. And that's how I'm going to have my setup for now. Uh, I might do something different later because uh, RAID is very useful um, for you know, securing your backups. For me, uh, I have multiple backup locations, so it's fine. Uh, I don't need to have this set up in a RAID, but uh, it does have that option. It also has the option to span. So you could take, like I have two 4 terabyte hard drives, I can take them and make it one 8 terabyte hard drive, uh, which is also something I've done in the past, but I'm not going to do that uh, this time. And it's, uh, it's hardware RAID, it's all controlled by uh, dip switches on the device. So that being said, let's go ahead and get it out of the box. First up, what seems to be an accessories box, and then it looks like it's in here upside down, I guess. Oh, it comes with a stand. It looks like it's aluminum, but it's clearly plastic, which, I mean, 
It's fine. It kind of matches the laptop stand that I bought. It's pretty funny. We have instructions, paperwork, and then the enclosure itself. Let's get the box out of the way. Now, uh, keen-eyed viewers are already going to notice something. And I did this on purpose. <laughs> uh, this looks just like the uh, 5 comma 1 cheese grater Mac Pro. <laughs> so, kind of a, a homage to my old friend that was only here for a moment. But uh, I still enjoyed it very much. But anyways, this is a good look at the enclosure itself. So on the back panel here, you have your USB 3 connection, you have the power button, and we have the power, uh, the, the plug for the power supply. God, I don't know why that, that uh, tongue tied me there. And then here are the dip switches for setting your RAID. And then the front panel is just blank. There's the bottom. The bottom actually has uh, instructions for the dip switches. That's pretty cool. So overall, pretty cool looking device. Let's go ahead and get into the accessory pack here and see what else they gave us. So here is the USB-C cable. Sorry. Uh, so here is the uh, USB 3.0 cable. And the power brick, which is pretty substantial. And we have oh, another part of the power. This is the plug. We have a bag full of screws here. I'm assuming that's to mount the hard drives on the inside. Uh, they give you a screwdriver, one of these cheap plastic jobs. Um, it does have that the rotating part for your finger, for your for your thumb or your, or your index finger when you're unscrewing, which is pretty handy. Uh, a lot of the cheap screwdrivers that are included with stuff, they don't do that, so that's pretty nice that they did that. And what is this? More screws. Got a lot of screws. Two bags worth. Uh, instruction manual and warranty card. Dragoon series. So they did, uh, <clears throat> uh, so they do have a USB-C version of this. Um, I didn't feel like it was worth the extra $20. Uh, it was a little bit more than $20 because I actually got this on sale. Uh, so I didn't feel like it was worth it uh, to go USB-C. I mean, I have adapters everywhere. I have a hub. Uh, so I don't really need um, the USB-C version, but that is available. All right, so let's go ahead and open this thing up and get these hard drives mounted, shall we? All right, so for the purpose of this video, I will be using the included screwdriver so we can see exactly what your experience is gonna be <laughs> like. <laughs> Just kidding. So they include a Phillips head screwdriver, but the screw to open it up is Torx. Ooh, that's not a good start. I fix it to the rescue. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. All right, it looks like it's about this size. Bingo. That bottom one was torqued down pretty good. So there's one more screw on the bottom here. I forgot to mention. So I, I removed the two screws on the back that I could see. And actually, in hindsight, it looks like I didn't even have to remove those. But anyways, there's another screw underneath that I'm assuming will take off the front panel. And that one is Phillips. <laughs> So 
So that might be exactly why they do that. They don't provide the torque screw because you don't need to take that one off, but we'll see. All right, so there's the, uh, the front panel off. And the back panel, yep, not necessary. So we'll go ahead and put those, uh, I'll go ahead and put those two torque screws back on right now. And my bad for talking smack right out the gate. They don't provide the torques bit because you don't need to touch these. Put it back together. Whoops. My bad, Yoda Master. Clearly you know what you're doing and I don't. All right. So now it has these two trays in here. And it says in the instructions, please note the orientation of the trays. So we'll take note. That's how they're oriented. And we'll do this one tray at a time. So let's see here. If you look inside, you can see the SATA connection. And that gives you an idea. Sorry, the lighting is really hard with that camera, with my overhead camera. So, and then the other one's glary. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but you can tell where the SATA connection is, the way that your hard drive needs to be oriented is like so. Now to the bag of screws. So the two different bags have uh, two different threads. One is a fine thread, one is a coarse thread. And this is going to be one of those uh, uh, don't do as I do moments. Um, whenever I'm mounting a hard drive, whether it be in a, in a PC case or in an enclosure, I always just put two screws, one on each corner. Because I don't feel like four screws is necessary. Now I thought that Oh, I guess it's not. So I thought that this hard drive was the fine thread, but it's not. It's the coarse thread. That's why they give you two different bags of screws. <laughs> so if you're not sure what kind of screws your hard drive uses, don't force it because you will cross thread them and then you'll have a bad time. All right, so I recommend <laughs> you put in all four screws, but I'm not gonna, I never do. All right, finally, screw number two. So look at two screws, nice and snug, <laughs> but put all four of them in though. So it has a nice little, uh, has a nice rail system Slides in really easy. And then seated in place. Very nice. Let's do hard drive number two. All right. Always verify your orientation, kids. Yeah, I, guess. I hate these tiny screws, man. They do not have us fat-fingered individuals in mind when they make these things. Done and done. Installed. No. <laughs>
put the front panel back on. I don't believe, here, hold on. Let me read the instructions, hang on. I don't believe there's anything else that needs to be done. Nope. Uh, there's no other screws you need to add in here. We just gotta put the front panel back on. So the fit and finish of that front panel is a little bit rough uh, as far as the uh, aluminum goes. Uh, so it, it, it doesn't slide in pr very smooth, I want to say. Um, your results may vary, I guess. Golly! That's why I refuse to uh, replace the hideous orange carpet in this room. It's really hard to find things. <laughs> So I'm going to go back to talking smack about their screwdriver because it appears like the tip on this thing is not even the correct bit. I'm switching to iFixit. So hopefully your experience is better, but it's the, the tip on that screwdriver is not it's not the correct bit, so it's jumping around. And it's hard to get a good bite on it. All right, I found a screw that worked. That was annoying. So hopefully your, uh, your experience with that is better, but mine was not great. So the instructions for the dip switches, like I said, they are on the bottom. But they're also readily available on their website. And for my use, both switches need to be off. And that puts it into like the individual mode. And it comes that way by default. So it's already set that way for, for uh, so it's already set that way from the factory. So that's cool. So, all right, let's go ahead and get it plugged in. See how she works. Right. USB 3 cable to the hub. Hubba hubba. So the hub I'm using is just this little anchor guy. She works pretty well. Alright. Power to power. And lastly, power button. We got a blue LED light. And look at that. Both of the discs showed up. There's my long-term storage. There's the backup. It's cool when things work. As intended. I dig, I dig, I dig. All right. That's that. All right, so my thoughts overall, I mean, installation was fairly simple. Uh, a few issues I had with the screws and their included screwdriver, but other than that, uh, it was pretty straightforward uh, as far as a uh, hard drive, uh, as far as getting the hard drives installed. Uh, overall product quality, fit and finish, I should say. Uh, uh, so it is aluminum, which is nice for uh, heat dissipation, but uh, the aluminum's a little rough around the edges, I should say, so that's a finishing or a QC issue. Uh, some of the screw holes didn't line up uh, very well, and I had some issues getting that bottom screw back in because of that, but I mean, that's just being nitpicky. Uh, overall construction, uh, it's fine. The stand that they give you, like I said, it's meant to look like it's aluminum, but it's not. It's clearly plastic. Uh, but it, it is pretty cool. And like I said, just by pure luck, it does happen to match the stand I bought for my laptop. Uh, so that was, that was pretty nice. And it is nice of them to include something like that overall. So I'm not going to complain about it too much, but just know like in the pictures, it looks like it's aluminum, but it's, it's not. It's plastic. 
Uh, the mechanism inside for you know the trays for mounting the hard drive, that's really nice. The rail system that they have in place there is really nice. Uh, they go in really easy. Uh, just double check that you have them oriented the proper way. And they slide in and out really easy. Uh, operation, again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, plug in the USB where the USB goes. <laughs> plug in the power and make sure the dip switches are set the way you want them. And turn it on. Uh, the thing worked right away. It does have a blue uh, LED indicator. Uh, I don't know. I didn't notice when I was accessing the drives uh, if that blinks or not uh, while it's in use or while it's reading the drives. It didn't seem like it did, but it might. Uh, I, like I said, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, but it does have a blue LED indicator on the back. And yeah, I mean, overall, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, retail for this guy, for the USB 3 version that I bought, uh, it does retail for $99, which is a little bit steep, but not too bad, actually. But it is a little bit steep for a, an enclosure that doesn't have active cooling. That being said, I got mine on sale on Amazon for $79, and I see it come on sale frequently. Uh, so you can get it for less than retail. The USB-C version is $120, and that version was not on sale when I bought mine. And like I mentioned, the difference in price, even if I paid retail, that $20 difference just to get uh, the USB-C version, I don't feel like it was worth it for me, for my needs. Um, you know, your needs might vary. So if, if you need the USB-C version, it is available, and there is a $20 markup. Uh, I haven't really paid attention since I purchased mine uh, to see if they went on sale again and if the USB-C version has gone on sale. Uh, so I don't know how frequently that one does go on sale, but I'm sure it does. Uh, so just, I would set a, uh, an alert uh, on your browser uh, for whenever there's a price drop or just actively check it on Amazon uh, or their website and see you know whenever they're having a sale if you wanna grab it for less than retail. But uh, anyhow, for the price, uh, I, I think it's it's perfectly fine. It's going to suit my needs, and uh, I like that it looks like a little mini Mac Pro. <laughs> all right, that's all I have for this one. Thank you again for stopping by. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and help feed that hungry algorithm. Uh, please stay tuned for a new episode of The League of Sedentary Gentlemen. We have been away for a while on kind of a summer hiatus. Uh, this is a very busy time of year for my family. Uh, but I will be trying to get the gang back together for another episode uh, this coming Wednesday. So the episode, if we're able to record Wednesday, the episode will post on the weekend. So uh, stay tuned for that if you are a subscriber to my podcast. I apologize for the long delay. Uh, we've been on uh, a pretty long hiatus here for the summer, but we are coming back, I promise. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I hope you have a great afternoon, and like always, thank you for watching.